the most important thing is that uh, we were always against nuclear power. This was kind of the reason why we were founded. Some people say the Greens were founded in the, in the fight against nuclear power plants. Uh, for some, this is even uh, in a very precise way through. They were even, even created when, you know, mothers and fathers met during the demonstrations. Uh, but today the decision in Germany was not made by some crazy Greens, by some crazy environmentalists. We're strong, we're getting stronger, but we're not that strong that we can, you know, have an influence about the whole society. So don't overestimate, uh, you know, uh, the power and the strength of the Greens in Germany. This decision, unlike the decision before when we were in power in Germany, 2001, when the Social Democrats and the Greens shared power, was not made by 51% of the parliament against 49% of the parliament as the first decision together with the electricity companies at that time. This time after Fukushima, and to be a little bit more precise maybe and to be more honest, I have to say not only after Fukushima but in particular after Angela Merkel lost some very important key states to us, in particular my home state, Baden-Württemberg, the current government of Christian Democrats and liberals, I should say so-called liberals, uh, together with us, the opposition, Social Democrats and Greens, together decided to phase out of nuclear power until the year 2022. And the irony there is, it's even a bit quicker than if we would have stick to the first phase out program when we were in power. So this decision, as I said, was taken by opposition and government together. I'm aware that there are huge concerns, like in the Czech Republic and some other countries, what's going on with these crazy Germans? <laughs> Will they go back to Stone Age? Will they, uh, you know, go back to the trees, uh, undress and, and uh, whatever? Uh, well, that's not exactly what's taking place in Germany these days. And I'm not talking about us politicians. If you talk to Siemens, and obviously Siemens is not a pure green, you know, uh, economic uh, group. They decided also to phase out of nuclear power and to get rid of nuclear power industry. Why do they do that? Are they crazy? Do they want to quit the company? Do they want to lose money and burn money? Certainly not. They want to earn money. But their analysis is in order to earn money, the future is not with nuclear power. The future is with saving energy, energy efficiency, and renewables. Look at Bosch. Of course, I give Bosch because it's a company from my home state, Bad Wittenberg. <laughs> but it's one of the oldest companies we have, 150 years of history. Bosch has decided their future source of income will be sustainability, efficient engines, parts for uh, renewables. <coughs> or take the car manufacturing industry. You know that one of the biggest fairs, I guess even the biggest fair in the world on car uh, industry is taking place in Frankfurt every year. Not the kind of place where Green Party leaders, Andre, used to be in the past and, and felt comfortable. When we went there, we, we kind of hided ourselves that nobody sees us. Today you go there and you're kind of the hero there. And everybody from the car manufacturing industry tells you, no, no, we have a much greener car than our neighbor, our competitor. Our car is much greener. So what I'm telling you is that the green idea from the corner of the society came into the center of the society. So we have a kind of a race who is greener than the other greens. Of course, we greens try to tell that we're the greenest green party of all uh, when we uh, compete with our competitors. So to make a long story short, the decision of phasing out from nuclear power in Germany is shared by important parts of German business economy. And the reason for that, and also the reason why I suggested my party to support the government, although we would have loved after Fukushima to phase out quicker, was because I understood one thing from our dialogue with the industry and with the business community. For them, the worst thing to happen is if every four years energy policy changes. They need a long-term strategy. 
they need to know what we politicians want, not in one term, not in two terms, but in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years from now. And there we can help. And that's why we thought it's important to have a decision, government and opposition together, because now it's clear for the German business economy, the future is within renewables, energy efficiency, and saving energy. And guess what happens? The same day we took that decision, huge investments were plans. The same investments, they did not take place in the years before, because it was not clear where Germany is heading to with energy policy. So I'm very confident we still, although we have unfortunately uh, huge challenges with our education system, but we still have one of the best education systems in the world. We have some of the best engineers of the world that we can manage. So the question is now, can we prove that the fourth largest economy in the world, the strongest economy inside the European Union, can have growth? guarantee jobs, create new jobs, have wealth, not being energy depending from neighboring countries. Of course, in a free energy market, we exchange energy, but it shouldn't be one-sided, obviously. Don't have a race with the energy prices up to the bottom and manage not replacing nuclear power through coal because then we would solve one problem through another problem, the climate problem. So that's the challenge Germany is facing. And the answer is very, very easy, because when I talk to my Czech friends, sometimes they're kind of concerned, you know, will Germany now uh, send uh, environmental-friendly uh, <laughs> tanks to, to, to the Czech Republic? Be sure nobody is having that intention, in particular not my party. It's certainly not our intention. I'm a strong believer in free market economy. Of course, uh, in our tradition, based on Ludwig Erhard's philosophy, based on social welfare state, and added to that, a new contract, social welfare state was a contract between business economy and between unions. The new contract is between environmentalists, the Greens, and the business economy, in greening the economy. But based on that, I believe on free market economy. So if we prove in Germany that we can do that, what I just described, wealth, growth, jobs, no energy dependence from neighboring countries, no replacing through coal, then I'm very sure, based on the market rules, others will follow. And we will even have a first mover advantage, as we do already. And believe me, this is not an isolated German, you know, craziness. Look at the Italians and their decision in their referenda. Look at the Swiss. Are the Swiss all crazy greens? The Austrians. Is it Austria, meanwhile, a developing country? Even the French, who are highest depending on nuclear power, in the recent opinion polls, at the first time an opinion poll where the majority of the French, 60% said that they don't want nuclear power in the future anymore. And the socialists in France, who follow a debate about who will be the leader, are seriously discussing that they switch their energy policy towards saying no to nuclear power. So 2012, you might get a government in the French Republic of socialists and Greens together that will decide, certainly not like in Germany, not 2022 because France has a much deeper depend, depending on nuclear power, but in the midterm to maybe also phase out of nuclear power on the mid and on the long term. So I'm rather cool with this debate, you know, are we isolated or not? At the end, we have to prove on the grounds. How do we judge whether we can prove or not? That's very simple. You cannot create a single nuclear power plant anywhere in the world with private money. You can only do it with public, with taxpayers' money. We're talking about billions. Just take the Finnish example. It's 10 billion euros and it's still not over. And how many years? At least one decade we're talking for the creation of a new nuclear power plant. So again, if we in Germany 
in Austria, in Italy, in, in Switzerland, and in a number of other countries in the world, can prove that we're quicker and cheaper with renewables, that's the way that others will go, simply be, if they're not following ideology, if they're pragmatic. Of course, others will go uh, <coughs> ideology way, but all those who are pragmatic will go that path for obvious reasons, because it's cheaper and it's quicker. So why should you waste money and burn taxpayers' money and have a time problem as well? So take China as an example. China is currently investing into coal because they have coal on the ground. They're investing into, re into nuclear and they're investing <coughs> into huge amounts of money into renewables at the same time. They would love to fade out, phase out of nuclear power, but their problem is that the growth is so fast and so uncontrolled that they use every source of energy they have, every simply. But at the same time, they realize that they came to a point where the model they're following is not sustainable and will not, cannot continue in the future. So we get so many delegations from China these days. My party, the Green Party, and I sometimes, you know, I, I kind of knock myself if it's really my party and if it's really me, when I sit in front of a delegation of the Communist Party of China, visiting the headquarters of the Green Party in Germany, and discussing with us about the Green New Deal. That's reality. They come to us and want to discuss with us about the Green New Deal. They do not ask me about nuclear power, because they know that's history. They do not ask me about coal. They know that's history. Yes, they do it still, but they do it because the growth is so fast. And they wait until we reach that point where we're quicker and faster in renewables. So it's a question of time, because they invest so huge amounts of money that we cannot invest in Germany. We don't have that amount of state subsidies that they have available. So they're very confident, and they even say that to us. In a number of years, we will be ahead of you, they tell us. We will be ahead of you with renewables. So to, con to conclude, the number of nuclear power plants in the world is not increasing. It's decreasing, because more nuclear power plants are closed than built new in the world. It's obvious that if you talk about nuclear power plant, certainly not in the Czech Republic, but in other countries of the world, you cannot distinguish that from the sister or the brother of the so-called peaceful use of nuclear power, the military use of nuclear power. Look at Iran. So also for security reasons, we have to develop a strategy that is sustainable for the whole world. And that's why I believe let's put together our brains, our most intelligent people, our researchers, our smartest people to solve the problem. And there we're together. <laughs> and that is no, none of us wants to be energy depending. And in particular, I share the feelings of the Czech people with the historical experience of living under the umbrella of the Soviet dictatorship that they don't want to go back to a new energy dependence. That's completely understandable, and it's one of the most logical things to do. And by the way, the same is true for our country. We will also need more diversification with gas resources. That's why I support Nabucco, because I believe Nabucco is extremely important not to be too much depending on Russian gas. Since we need gas for a transforming period, as an ideal partner of renewables, because gas is flexible, unlike coal and nuclear. So there, I think we should work together. 2010, the member states of the European Union spent close to 300 billion euros to the oil exporting countries for oil resources. Imagine we would have used that money for our schools, for our universities for social justice, for saving the environment, for whatever good reasons we have and for all the needs we have in our societies. That's why let's start maybe as a, as a starting point that we need to be less depending on oil, on gas, but at the same time on uranium. Thank you. <laughs>